Hi there, it's me, Jeff Hagenstead. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Exegel. First, I want to apologize for the length of this video. It's a very complex subject and I want to simplify it as much as possible, but it's still going to be a little long. Hit pause, grab a snack, I'll wait. I'm toying with the idea of calling this video, what the hell's wrong with you people, how stupid are you people, or why can't you people give me dates? I think that's a little too long for YouTube, but it kind of reflects some of the comments we get about product delays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little explanation of what it takes for us to source electronic components normally and how we get delivery and production scheduled. And then I'm hoping to give you a sense of just what a nightmare it's become. And I'm not just going to do it with our products. I'm also going to give you some real world examples using cars, appliances, and clothing just to try to help you understand um, the things that we face and understand why. It's like when you go to a store to buy a new sofa and they look you straight in the eye and they say, yeah, it's probably going to be nine months. And you go, but it's right there. And they say, yeah, it's still going to be nine months. But it's right there and you stand there in the store wondering just how stupid these people are. So my goal here is to try to help you make sense of all that. So let's start off with a little bit of how it usually works. I'm going to be talking about electronics and specifically our products, but this really applies to everything you buy. And it also helps explain why when you watch the news and hear them talk about inflation and how some of it is actually inflation and why some of it is also just the effects of supply and demand on a product's cost and supply chain timing. So here we go. Starting out lesson one, this is how it's normally done. So we're located here in Egan, Minnesota, just south of Minneapolis. Egan is home to a lot of things. Well, mostly the Minnesota Vikings practice facility and us, and that's about it. It's really a small bedroom community. We buy most of our production parts from a key partner called DigiKey. They're a great partner for us, and don't take anything that you hear in this video as a shot at them. They do way better than most of their cohort. They're located in Thief River Falls, Minnesota, a nice little town up in the northern part of the state. They're hardworking people with a strong work ethic. They've got a 1.1 million square foot warehouse where they normally keep thousands and thousands of components in stock for small companies like ours. The way it usually works is we order our parts from them, they pull them from the warehouse and they ship them back to us. That whole process usually only takes about two days. We then drop all the parts off at one of our assembly partners who builds and tests the boards. They build and test basic functionality and they generally get them back to us in about two weeks. That process is normally very predictable. So lesson two, let's flash back a few years. America find itself in a trade war. We introduce tariffs. Other countries introduce retaliatory tariffs. Costs rise, but raw material and the availability of finished products aren't really affected. Also, there's Brexit. No opinions here. I'm from the U.S. But now, global markets and businesses are getting really nervous. And we aren't even going to talk about the U.S. election chaos. And then we get a global pandemic. Businesses and cities shut their doors and millions of people are either laid off or start working from home. A lot of factories shut down completely, but then we get vaccines and a billion people get them and we start opening back up, venturing out and buying things. But unfortunately, stores all over the world have depleted their inventory of goods. Factories start back up, but they've got huge production backlogs. This also causes an incredible surge in the need to ship products around the world. So this is where we get into a product manufacturer's nightmare, my nightmare. We place orders, but they can't be fulfilled because the warehouses have been sucked dry of key components. In our case, only three components. So we have brokers that start searching. They search the US, they search the world. Eventually they find them somewhere. The brokers buy them, well, we pay for them, but Lord knows where they are. 
The parts are actually fairly small and they fit into relatively small boxes, say one half square foot in size. It's too expensive to air freight all these little boxes all over the world, so they go to a shipping consolidator. The consolidator puts them into 1,100 square foot shipping containers, which generally means about 2,000 of these boxes per containers. Then the full containers are shipped to ports that handle millions of containers a year. Each container has to be assigned a slot on a container ship that will hold between 5 and 20,000 containers. The container can sit in ports waiting weeks for a slot. Once it's loaded, it can be a three-week voyage from, let's say, Asia to the U.S. When the ship gets to a U.S. port, it can sit out in the ocean for several more weeks waiting an unloading slot in the port, and U.S. Customs has to inspect the ship. 20,000 containers, 2,000 boxes each, do the math, that's a lot of paperwork. Finally, the container gets taken from the ship and gets placed in holding in the port. Eventually, the consolidator on this end takes the container to its warehouse, unloads it, and forwards the individual packages to their respective brokers. The brokers then ship those parts to us either directly through other brokers or through our distributor. At this point, months may have passed under normal conditions. Post-pandemic lockdowns, there's extra demand on the system, which adds even more demand on capacity and even more delay. As I said, this isn't only affecting us. If you go to buy furniture or an appliance, you can be looking at delivery times of six months to a year after you order your item. This is Apple Valley Ford, just a few minutes from my house. Yesterday, my neighbors went to buy a new car. This is a dealer who advertises itself as the largest dealer in Minnesota. He only had five brand new cars on the lot. The rest are used cars, commanding top dollar. Don't fact check me, I'm just relaying this. When my neighbor asked the salesman when more cars would come in, he looked sad and said, it's really more a question of if. So this is what's going on out there. Hopefully this helped you understand the incredible amount of ambiguity in everybody's supply chain these days. As you can imagine, when we get brokers involved, it can triple the costs that we pay for raw materials and all those shipping costs get passed on to us as well. When you and 50 of your neighbors decide to remodel your homes, that demand drives up prices. When it costs more to produce things, costs rise. This can have a huge impact on consumer prices, but these are temporary effects while the system catches up. I mentioned inflation. This isn't really inflation as you normally think about it because these, these costs should drop over time. Actual inflation is caused by more permanent effects like rising wages, demand shifts like those we see as we move from gas vehicles to electric vehicles, fossil fuels to solar, and so on. Anyway, my goal here was to help you understand all of this, and I hope it helped. Thanks for watching. Feel free to drag me in the comments below. Oh yeah, I think everybody says you're supposed to say like and subscribe. But honestly, it's a Friday afternoon. It's been a long week, and right now I just say, whatever. See ya.